up until playing Resident Evil 4 Remake, my expectations were about as middle of the road as you can get. On the one hand, I loved the remake of Resident Evil 2, and it was one of my favourite PS4 games, barring its underwhelming B scenario. But on the other hand, there was Resident Evil 3 Remake. While a competent game in and of itself, it barely even resembled the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis and was missing half its content. It was a game I was highly anticipating, but was left massively disappointed with. So when the remake of Resident Evil 4 was announced, and then during the lead up to the release, I was in this in-between frame of mind where I was looking forward to it, but at the same time I wasn't hyped for it. Something to note as well is that unlike 2 and 3, which are games I had around the time they were new, RE4 was a game I played a lot later on. In fact, I never even played it until the next console generation. My first experience of playing Resident Evil 4 was in 2012, the HD remaster on the PS3 to be exact. And while I did enjoy the game, and thought it was really good and a lot of fun, I was never too heavily invested in it and don't have the nostalgia a lot of others do. I will say as well, I am someone who much prefers the original games with the zombies, viruses, umbrella and all that other stuff. But despite it being pretty polarising, I liked the game a lot for what it was, I would probably say the original Resident Evil 4 is a 9 out of 10 game. I think my experience gives me a little bit more of an uncommon perspective, as most people you see talking about it either love the original and played it when it was still current, or haven't played the original at all and the remake is their first time experiencing what it has to offer, but I'm someone who kind of falls in the middle. Something I find interesting is that, with the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3, they were originally games with the camera angle style gameplay, and their remakes took those games and brought them forward, translating them into the over the shoulder style, whereas Resident Evil 4 was always over the shoulder, so unlike 2 and 3, the original and remake of 4 is more of a direct one to one comparison. So as someone who liked the original, what did I think of the remake? Well, overall, I'd say that I did like it, and I liked it a lot. Having learned my lesson from skipping the demo of 3 Remake, I made sure to give 4 Remake's demo a try before spending my money on it, and from the demo, I thought it was really good. So I kept my pre-order for the game open, and decided to give Capcom another chance. Between 2 Make and 3 Make, 4 Make would be the tiebreaker. The version I played was on the PS4, the Steelbook version to be exact. If you want to see what that looks like, I'll have a card linking to that video for you to check out after you've finished watching this review. So back to the game itself, I had a lot of fun playing it, and I felt it had the right blend of keeping the essence of the original, while modernising and adding to it, for the most part, which I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, I did really like it. Also, I think some important context to add is that I'm not someone who really enjoys modern games very much. In my opinion, AAA gaming at this point has become corrupted and creatively bankrupt, and has gotten incredibly stale and uninteresting, with most modern titles either repeating what we've seen done better hundreds of times before, being released in an inexcusable state of quality, trying to fleece the player of as much money as humanly possible, or trying to shove current day political messaging down your throat, or in most cases, a combination of the above. Looking at my current PS4 collection, I was actually surprised and a little depressed to see that the last major AAA full-priced release I'd say I actually enjoyed was, funnily enough, Resident Evil 2 Remake from four years ago. Everything else since is either a smaller, cheaper AA release, an older game from before 2019, or was disappointing. But enough of that side tangent, and back to Resi 4. Generally, I noticed people online seem to be split down the middle, with some saying it's an upgrade over the original, and others saying it's a downgrade, but to me, I'd say it's more of a side grade. I liked it as much as the original, and I think they both have pros and cons, and can coexist, without one being the definitive version. I feel kind of the same about Resident Evil 2, but with that game, if you pressed me, I'd say I like the original maybe 10% more. But with 4, I would actually say that I couldn't choose one, and they are both neck and neck in my mind. 
RE4 is a big game and it felt around the same kind of length as the original. It took me roughly 25 hours to complete on standard difficulty, but I really did savour the experience and searched every nook and cranny I could find and completed a lot of the side activities and shooting galleries etc. But if you just go straight through the game normally, or you're doing a second playthrough, it'll probably take more like 15 to 20 hours. I must say it's been a while since I last bought a game where I got this much playtime out of it, and a mostly linear game at that, and I definitely say I got my money's worth on my first playthrough alone. It is long, but it never feels bloated or like it drags, and I thought the good pacing from the original was still there, perhaps even tightened up a little bit more. If you've played 2 Remake, then the gameplay here is more or less carried straight over from that, and it has a very familiar feel, but there are a few tweaks they've made to it. Shooting is a lot like 2, where you point your weapon and it takes a couple of seconds for Leon's aim to steady, represented by the crosshair being wider at first, then becoming smaller. You can fire before this, but your grouping won't be as tight, and you'll be more accurate when it steadies. It's a mechanic that I like personally, as it adds another layer to the shooting. You'll have to judge whether you want to fire faster but risk wasting some ammo, or if you want better accuracy but risk your enemy closing the gap and attacking. On the other hand though, one of the really cool things about the original was how all the guns had a laser sight and the dot would actually shine on what you were pointing at, but here in the remake that's been changed and the laser scope is only available for about 2 or 3 weapons as a separate attachment. I think if I were making the game, I'd have the reticle from 2 and 3, but I'd also have laser scopes available to upgrade every gun with. We also have moving while aiming, which the original didn't have. It wasn't something that bothers me personally, but it is a nice quality of life improvement. The controls from the original are old by today's standards, but not unplayable by any stretch, and if you're used to newer games, it doesn't take long to adjust to, but if you prefer to move while aiming, that is present in the remake. Leon now runs faster than he did in 2, which is cool how it makes sense within the story as well as being a gameplay improvement, so it's like he's in better shape after his government training. There is also now the ability to use stealth, so if you crouch, the Ganados won't hear you, and you can perform an instant stealth kill on basic enemies. Is it maybe a bit of a trope? Yeah, but it is optional, and you're never forced to use it in, say, a section where if you get spotted, you fail. There's none of that here, it is entirely optional, so you can ignore it completely, or you can choose to utilise it depending on your playstyle. I will say, I like that they included it, as it does add some player choice to the gameplay. And something that I loved was the ability to parry melee attacks, so if you press L1 as an enemy is about to melee you, Leon will block it using his knife, and it can stun the enemy, allowing you to counter-attack. I feel it adds an extra layer to the combat and makes it even more fun than before. And the best thing about it was that, in the options, there is a setting so you can toggle it to make it so you can perform a parry by swinging the knife yourself with R2, so instead of a button press doing it automatically, you can perform it yourself by doing an attack, which makes it feel very organic. The best showcase of the mechanic is during the boss fight with Krauser, where you have a proper knife fight with him this time, which I definitely recommend turning on this setting for, as it was one of the coolest parts of the game for me. Speaking of the knife, now instead of it being infinite, it will now get damaged each time you parry with it or use it on an enemy. Then you will need to either get it repaired at the merchant, or you can upgrade its durability so it lasts longer. I would definitely recommend upgrading the durability as soon as you can, as you'll likely be using the knife a lot during your playthrough. Something I was worried about them changing was the inventory system from Resident Evil 4, with the attaché case and how you would rotate your items and move them around to make them all fit within the space. I remember actually, when I saw how the system from Resident Evil 8 looked, I was thinking, oh god, please don't make 4 remakes like that, where it was like a really lame 2D version of 4's system, but I was really happy to see that they've kept it the same as RE4. There was something very satisfying about organising your inventory for some reason, and I always loved that part of RE4, it was almost like a mini-game within the main game. 
One thing I didn't like though, was how now when you select an item, there's a center storage option. So if your case is full, you can send stuff to the storage without having to go drop it off yourself, which actually just completely negates the entire point of inventory management. Imagine if in the classic games, when your inventory slots are all full, and if you could just send it straight to the item box without having to visit a save room. Like no, that just completely removes the whole point of inventory management. That was the core mechanic of Resident Evil's gameplay loop. You can ignore it like I did though, but if they let you do that in a Resident Evil game, they might as well just have a skip boss fight option or unlimited ammo or something. When it comes to the inventory system, an addition they made was how you can now unlock and attach charms to it, which are basically little keyring looking things that each give you a different effect. So one might make you craft more ammo and another will give you more health when using a healing item. You can unlock these by doing the shooting range which returns from the original. Something they've greatly expanded on are the side activities, like how in the original there were the blue medallions in the village, but here they've been greatly expanded with loads of contracts you can complete like shooting medallions, exterminating rats, and there are even unique enemies to defeat. Players will be rewarded for revisiting completed areas. One time I went back to an area with a key I was missing and I managed to find the assault rifle you get in RE3 Remake. Completing optional activities will reward you with spinels which can be traded for unique items at the merchant. Speaking of the merchant, the buying, selling and upgrading system returns but feels a bit more expanded. Now you can make different ammo types with the addition of the gunpowder mixing mechanic from the previous remakes, but here you mix gunpowder with an item they call resources, which are basically bits of scrap metal you find in the game world, but sometimes can be bought from the merchant. I always seem to find myself low on ammo throughout the game, with just enough to get by, which did take me back to the PS1 games. The version I played was on the PS4 and it looked really good for the most part, despite obviously pushing the old hardware. It looked about on the same level as the 2 and 3 remakes, except that here the graphics had those trademark RE engine unloaded textures in spades. Many times I'd noticed surfaces that sometimes took tens of seconds to finally materialise. It didn't make the game unplayable by any means, but it was noticeable in some areas. Other than that, the only other glitch I noticed was this one, which did make me laugh, but otherwise it felt like a really solidly made game, which isn't too surprising with this being a Japanese made game and not a western one. You can certainly tell that the PS4 is showing its age here, but I'm glad they still chose to support it, as many people such as myself don't have a grand to spare on a new console and a 4K TV at the moment. Unfortunately, there's no Xbox One version though, and the PS4 is the only last gen platform supported. I'd imagine their reasoning being because the PS4 was a lot more popular, but I do think Capcom should have still put out an Xbox One version so owners of that console wouldn't have to miss out. While I haven't seen the next gen version in person, from watching other people stream the game, those versions don't seem to have that problem, so if you have a PS5 or a Series X, I don't think that'll affect you. Aesthetically, the remake has more of a dark and creepy atmosphere than the original, and seems to take itself a bit more seriously, which as someone who's more of a fan of the original trilogy with their scarier ambience, I did appreciate it a lot and think it felt more in line with them. Different people, depending on who you ask, seem to prefer either one over the other, but I like the darker look, although with that said, the cheesy stuff isn't entirely gone and I did find myself either laughing at some of Leon's observations and one-liners, or cringing, but in a good way. The sound design is what you'd expect if you've played the other remakes. Gunshots and reloading sound fine, but not quite as punchy as they did in the original. I played the game with the original soundtrack enabled, so I didn't experience the new soundtrack, but with the classic games, the soundtracks played a big part in giving them their atmosphere, and I personally couldn't imagine playing them listening to anything else. Although what is BS is how just like in Tomb Make, you have to buy the original soundtrack as DLC. It wasn't cool when they did it then, and it isn't cool now. That should just be included with the game, and there's no excuse for making it a separate extra apart from greed. 
it does look like they took on board most of the criticism 3 make got in regards to cutting out and changing too much stuff, as 4 make certainly does feel like it's supposed to be RE4. All three areas of the original make a return, there's the village, the castle and the island. I remember rumours floating around that the island would be cut, but thankfully it's still included. I would say the best most memorable section was the village and it is probably the most intact. The castle and island had a lot of the familiar areas or at least the ones I could remember. But in my mind I never found the latter two areas as interesting or memorable as the village. Some of the stuff I noticed was missing I was sad to see could, like the cable cars and the runaway trucks. Although with these they are there in the game world but they don't function so it's as if the developers were saying, see, we didn't forget about it, we just couldn't be asked. Also, noticeably absent from the island section is the IT boss fight, which is strange, as you'd think with that being one of the more scary looking creatures, they've kept that in. Not a cut, but they did change the boss battle with the two gigantes for the worse, completely removing the player choice from it, making it practically pointless now. And then the worst omission is that there's no separate ways or assignment aider, which is pretty poor. I expect them to be a free DLC later like the mercenaries mode was, but if they plan to charge for those I think that's really bad. Most of the other curves are understandable and it's mostly a lot of the more stupid stuff that makes no sense, like the laser room which was a reference to the first movie, the giant statue of Salazar you had to run from, and that room with lava and those dragon turrets that breathed fire on you. I remember thinking, why is there a room with lava in a castle? I don't think you get many active volcanoes in Europe. Luckily, most of the cuts seem to be done to give the game a more serious tone and to tighten up the pacing though. However, there are also expanded parts as well, such as the whole lake being explorable after the Largo boss fight, and I really enjoyed what they did with the section with the regenerators where you have to flip the power back and forth and get the three keycard clearance levels. The returning characters are really good for the most part. There are bits about them which are improvements, or worse than the original, but I thought they averaged out overall. Leon definitely feels like the same character from 2 make, and he's portrayed as being a lot more scarred by the events of Raccoon City, which I like being a fan of the older games. I thought overall Ashley was improved, as she's a bit more likeable here, however it can still be a pain in the ass escorting her in some of the same sections as the original, namely the start of the castle with the catapults and the room of the pools of water. Also, in the remake, I actually enjoyed the section with players her a lot more, as it is another section that feels expanded and you have to use the light from a lantern you pick up to freeze enemies on the spot, and with you being almost entirely defenceless, it was one of the most tense parts of the game in my opinion. There is Ada, who a lot of people really don't like her voice acting, which is a different actor from 2 Remake, and she sounds noticeably different, but it didn't really bother me as she's only in the game for a few minutes. The Merchant, who's not really a character in the story, but is just there to sell your weapons. He's fine, but I wish they didn't make him repeat lines over and over while you're browsing the shop. He's supposed to be all mysterious, but here he won't shut up. I think out of all of Leon's fellow good guys, my favourite had to be Lewis, as I thought he looked really cool and had a funny personality, and was more of the wacky character to Leon who was the straight man, and I enjoyed their interactions and dialogue whenever he was with you. He also returns in that part in that house with all the Ganados trying to break in which I found actually even harder than the original, and his role is even expanded further with him being with us in the minecart section. Most enemies and bosses return with I think all the basic Ganado and Plaga types, and there is a new enemy called a Brood. I found them annoying at first, but aren't too bad once you got some of the more powerful weapons. I'd say my favourite enemies were the plagas that look like facehuggers as they do this really cool thing where they commandeer a ganado and control them like a puppet and then they come at you really fast and things would get really frantic. The garadors which I thought were better in this version and I really liked their introduction as well and the regenerators which they made even creepier if that's possible and the way you can use the thermal scope or a normal weapon and blow bits off of them exposing the parasites. 
and then there are the enemy characters and bosses like the village chief or the big cheese who has his main boss fight but they also added a section where he chases you in his human form which was a bit like Mr X in RE2. I think they could have gone the whole hog and made him a pursuer enemy who follows you around like Mr X, Nemesis or Lady Dimitrescu but I can see why they didn't as it wouldn't really work with you having to escort Ashley by that point. I really liked Del Largo, the big salamander you throw harpoons at, and that part was kept mostly the same, which is good, as that's one of my favourite bosses from the original. And then there's Krauser, who was awesome to fight in this game, with the parrying, and you're actually controlling Leon instead of quick time events. I did mention it before, but I did think this bit was dope. The bad guys who I felt were a downgrade unfortunately, however, were Verdugo, whose encounter was pretty much the same as the original, but just felt too easy and not as scary or frantic as before. Salazar, which I thought was pretty lame this time around, he was fine in his human form, but when you fight him, he just turns into a blob, whereas before he merged with the second Verdugo into this giant creature. Here, he was just really annoying to fight and didn't look as cool as before. And lastly, the main bad guy, Sadler, who in the original, people said he was a bit one-dimensional, but here, he's even more so, and he doesn't even have near as much screen time. You don't even meet him in the church anymore, or talk to him over the communication device. You just see him instead in a couple of visions, but there's no back and forth between Leon and him and we really don't actually see him in person until the island, and his character didn't feel as interesting or developed. Overall, I'd say I liked the remake about the same as the original. I did prefer the darker, scarier aesthetic, and the more serious tone however, as it fits in more of the PS1 games. I enjoyed the gameplay a lot, and there were some small changes to some of the story which mixed things up a bit if you were a returning fan of the 2005 version. I found it really fun and I think it highlights how much better games were back then, with a lot more creativity and quality as opposed to today, where most big releases are so uninspired and poorly made. It makes me wonder which game they'll remake next, I think they're most likely to do either 5 or 1 again, but I think I'd like Code Veronica X personally, either that or a new game but in this style, as I'm not really a fan of first person. Thanks for watching my review of Resident Evil 4 Remake, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, let me know what you thought of it in the comments and I'll see you next time.